I'm just going to throw a few quotes and then we go read in the word of God. Daniel would rather spend a night with the lions than miss a day without prayer. Daniel would rather spend a night with the lions than to miss a day without prayer. As the devil rose against prayer during that time and Daniel didn't bend into that. Today the devil will not threaten you to stop praying. He'll just make you busy. He'll just make you lazy. He'll just make you feel like, you know what, it's not your personality to pray. You just don't have a calling of an intercessor and all of that is nothing but pathetic lies from the pit of hell. You are a child of God. You were called to pray. You know, when, when John Chi was here, how many people came up to me and even now writing and they say, do you have John Chi's number? I, I need to talk to John Chi and people would get angry. People would get passionate. And of course, I won't give him a John Chi's number. And I said, that's not going to happen. You're not going to talk to John Chi. John Chi is too busy. But I need to talk to John Chi. And I'm, I'm thinking, John Chi doesn't want to talk to you. But there is a God that John Chi talks to, that is asking you, talk to me. There is a God. In Jeremiah 33, 3, he said, call on me. He says, my number is available. And how many times, you know, we would rather beg and seek to get a contact from someone when there is a God who that person depends on. Every day beckons us, says, come, come, come. And we say, no, 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 but I want to talk to him. Daniel would rather spend a day, a night with the lions than a day without prayer. For 40 years, someone said, the sun did not rise on China that God did not find a missionary Hudson Taylor on his knees. For 40 years a missionary Hudson Taylor rose up. When the day would get longer he would wake up earlier and he said this, for 40 years of his life never once the sun came up without him first being on his knees praying for China. I believe the same thing will be happening in our city. Before the sun rises, we already going to be on our knees pleading for our city, pleading for revival, believing for the best to come in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? In 1722, a Count Nicholas established a community in Germany for exiles of Moravia. He called it under the Lord's watch. In August 27th, 1777, 24 men and 24 women have entered into a covenant to create a chain of prayer that will not be broken. They started a prayer movement in Germany 24 hours a day. 24 men and women in the beginning and then others were added to it. This prayer lasted for 100 years without being broken. That movement became a missionary movement which eventually affected Charles and, and John Wesley and others. That movement created missionaries that were so radical for the gospel. The one time they wanted to reach Indies islands and there was no way to go into those islands but as slaves. These two guys from this prayer group went on a slaves market sold themselves as slaves, went into the Indies islands to preach the gospel and no one ever heard back from them. Because when we are a praying church, we will never be a straying church. It will be a powerful church. It will be a passionate church. We will be a radical church. And most importantly, we will see the power of God in Jesus' mighty name. Can somebody say amen? Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. Someone said, worry flourishes in the space prayerlessness creates. Prayer delights God's ear. It melts his heart. It opens his hand. God cannot deny a praying soul. I like what someone says, pray when you feel like. It is sin to neglect such an opportunity. Pray when you don't feel like, for it is dangerous to remain in such a condition. Somebody say amen. Turn to your neighbor say, you gotta pray more. Billy Graham said, to get our nation on its feet, we have to get down on our knees first. To get our city on its feet, you have to get down on your knees. 
To get your home on its feet, you have to get down on your knees. To get your business on its feet, you have to get down on your knees. To get your health on its feet, you have to get down on your knees. Richard Lewis, he was one of the guys who was working with our first president in the United States, George Washington. He sneaked on George Washington and he noticed that every morning at four o'clock in the morning, George Washington would escape into a public library, get his Bible, read his Bible, get on knees, on his knees and begin to pray to God. And this is the habit that our first president cultivated throughout his life. There are stories circulating of bullets being shot at him and nothing ever hitting him. There are stories circulating where supernaturally God birthed the nation because the general who wasn't a pastor was not a home group leader but he depended upon the king of all kings and the lord of all lords. If he was busy and could find time to meet with God at 4 a.m. my friend you're not a general. You're not a president. Okay some of some of us we have a lot of free time. We just need to kick the laziness in the curve. Wake up a little bit earlier. Close yourself in your room and spend time with the Holy Spirit. If mornings are not good for you after work, lock yourself in the room for 30, for 40, for an hour, whatever God leads you to, to spend time with the Holy Spirit. Can somebody say amen? Jim Caviezel, one of my favorite actors in Hollywood, he says, if I don't pray, I have no gratitude and no appreciation. If I lose these two things, gratitude and appreciation, I have no zeal for life that's why prayer is so important what would because what the world thinks of me is far less important than what God thinks of me the world at its best can only like you that's it the world does not produce love love only comes from God so you can choose to either be liked by many or loved by one if a Hollywood actor and I've studied a little bit about his personal life also would wake up very early to go exercise and then go spend time with God. How much more you and I are challenged to really make prayer our lifestyle. Martin Luther said it's possible, it's more possible to be alive without breathing than to be a Christian without praying.